hang with me. I'm getting set up for the live video as well. I'm recording over here for YouTube and I'll be over here live. Let me get started. So um, here we are, uh, getting set up here for our Soulful Sunday. I have two um, cameras going so that uh, we can do this live uh, and practice together in real time. But I'm also videotaping on a second camera so that we can um, post this on YouTube for those of you that might not be here right in this moment. So uh, welcome uh, to One Yoga and Fitness. Uh, at 10.30 on Sundays, we do Soulful Sunday, and it is my favorite class to teach. Uh, I think it's a lot of people's favorite class to be in. I'm just going to make a little adjustment here on the camera. So I had to pick it up to start it. So I'm grateful to be here, and I'm grateful for the very big outpouring of love and support uh, that we have received here at the studio uh, through this time. It's been crazy. And uh, I can't call it anything else. It's just been something totally uh, that we couldn't have seen coming, I guess, uh, in our limited little world. So welcome to Soulful Sunday. I'm going to just uh, start by reading the poem that kind of was the inspiration. Uh, this is the book, uh, The Way of Rest by Jeff Foster. And it is um, one of the books that just I go to for wisdom, inspiration. And so here we are. Uh, this is, this is where I came to this morning, um, and it's a theme that I've been uh, really working with for quite some time, I think for the last three or four years. It's called The Guru. The one who makes you laugh until your stomach hurts and you snort like a pig is your guru. The one who brings tears to your eyes, the one who makes you weep, your secrets out is your guru. The one who challenges you, triggers old pain in you, makes you face your deepest fears and longings, helps you tell the truth, is your guru. Every breath is your guru, every beat of the heart, every sound. The morning breeze caressing your cheek is your guru. The car that won't stop, the missed opportunity, the broken promise, the shattered bone, these are all your gurus. The ones you love, the ones who frustrate you like anything, the ones who bore you to tears, the ones you don't want to remember, the ones who are left, they are the gurus too. This entire life, so fleeting, so present, so rich with blessings, is your guru. You can seek your guru in an ashram, a church, a temple, a science lab. You can search for salvation in a cave on a mountaintop in India, but friend, if you look deeply into the present, you will find you are already there. The true altar is where you stand. The holy book writes itself moment by moment. The kingdom is spread out over the earth, waiting for open eyes. I get chills. You know how I say I get that feeling um, where my, my crown tingles and my arms tingle when I feel like I'm in tune and I'm on the right path. And I'm tingling everywhere right now, partly just because I feel the connection. I, I can't read a thing because I've got my readers to read here, but I can see all of the responses popping up on my phone. Um, so let me just start by saying uh, I love you, and I'm glad you're here with me today. Uh, some of you from far. I, I know friends from Oswego and family from Oswego, students from Oswego, but students here that are part of my One Yoga community every Sunday. Uh, but then there's a wider reach now, which is really kind of miraculous to this whole, uh, it's the gift. So let me read my reflection. You know, I always have my journal, uh, and I've journaled pretty much every day through this. This is what I, uh, what inspired from that prompt. This is an opportunity for a paradigm shift. 
an opportunity to pause and contemplate the lives we have been living, to question the very foundations we are standing on and the heights we are reaching for, a forced pause. And maybe we will look at our lives and conclude that we love everything about them. Maybe we will suddenly realize how much we enjoy our job and our routines. Maybe we will realize how much we love our families, how precious our time together is. Or maybe we will realize that our work has been sucking the life out of us and commit to pursuing a new career. We might see our 15 year relationship in a new light and decide it's time to move on. We might get a glimpse at the habits we had before this and glean out the ones that supported our best selves and our well being. Regardless of the details of the shift, it is certain we are all being transformed by this experience. We are all being elevated in our consciousness. We have talked about this age of transition, thinking it would be heralded by our own means. But here we are being humbled and collectively pushed to a new level of awareness by something beyond our control that we cannot even see, that does not discriminate between us. If you were settling, if you were sitting here now, I'd ask you, how has this event changed your perspective? How or how you will move forward? How you will live your life? What has it taught you? All of life is our material for evolution. Who are you becoming in this cocoon of COVID-19? There'll be more at the end. So let's just take a moment um, and, and just let that sit, right, right? Let that be there. And if you wanna, you know, respond to those questions that I asked, you know, who are you becoming in the cocoon of COVID-19, right? Metaphorically and literally in this conscious pause, right? We're in a very, it, it, almost in a suspended animation right now, which has given us the opportunity uh, to really turn inward right? Because there's less and less of that outward uh, connection. So just pause and ponder, pause and ponder, right? Use this as an opportunity to just reflect for a moment, just as we would in class. So maybe the best thing here is um, let's lie on our backs because the first posture I'm going to take you to is going to be banana sauna and through some floor work. So let's start to transition into our, into our floor position, lying on your back, uh, and just let your body come into comfort. And absolutely, if you're just gonna hang out and watch, that's okay too. But we're gonna start on our backs. I'm not going there just yet because I'm gonna teach this from standing. So once you're on your back, let's uh, just let your body settle out into evenness where you've got creative symmetry. And just imagine I'm on my mat right now, lying on my back, and you've let your palms turn up and your feet are parallel hip distance apart. And you're just beginning to connect with this earth, right? The earth beneath you. So for you, the earth is completely underneath your whole body. Feel the places where your body is connecting into the earth. The heels, maybe the calves, the buttocks, the shoulders, the back of the head. And just settle into evenness there. Feel the body dropping into the pull of gravity. And close your eyes and begin to just observe the natural rise and fall of the breath. Feeling the body as it gently moves with the inhalation and exhalation. Letting your inhales and exhales now become confined to the nose. So seal off the mouth and let the breath just be subtle, low, and slow. Let it come in through the nose, follow it down, let the belly rise to meet it. And as you exhale, you'll feel the belly draw in and the air gently release in this constant ebb and flow of inhalation and ex exhalation it's just a microcosm right of life of this taking in and letting go and we just follow the breath here for a few more moments just letting the breath be what it is but observing feeling your energy calm Feeling your body feel a little bit less tense. And if you're finding pockets of tension here as you lie, shift, move, accommodate, 
release. So we'll take the first posture here. As you take your next inhale, you're gonna reach your arms overhead. This is on your back, remember. I'm just pretending here that I'm on my back because you would not see me on my back. So you're gonna take your arms overhead. You're gonna take your left foot to the left edge of the mat. You're gonna take your right foot over that foot. And the legs are long, right? And now we're just gonna crisscross the arms and we're gonna shift the whole torso to the left edge of the mat. So as you're on your mat, you're in a side bend. And there's a tendency here for the right hip and right shoulder to roll up. Pin those down, draw the right shoulder and right hip back. Keep the length in the right side of your body. And then just take some nice breaths into the right side ribs. Feeling this expansion from the hip point to the, to the armpit really. And in this space are the lungs, right? Encased here. When we breathe in and out in this shape, we will create some freedom in the right side ribs. And that will enhance our ability to breathe deeply when we are not in the yoga postures, when we have freedom in the fascia that surrounds our rib cage. Take a couple more breaths here. Settle in, right shoulder and right hip down. And with your next inhale, you'll just release the arms, release the legs, take the feet back to center, take the arms to center, and then crisscross your elbows, the opposite one on the outside, the odd one. The right foot will come to the right edge of the mat and the left ankle will cross over. Once you've got that, you're gonna just start to shimmy the torso over to the right, coming into banana sauna on your back, the left hip moving over to the left, the shoulders shifting over to the right, your feet are over to the right edge of the mat and you're starting to get connected with the, the left shoulder and hip to the earth. Continue to breathe here, feel how the breath is compressed on the right side and expanding into the left side. This is how we direct prana in our yoga practice. We are giving the openness to the left side of the body to create physical space, but it's also emotional space. The space around the lungs, the ribs, the arms, that's where our heart chakra lives, right? So opening our hearts, opening to compassion, to love, to kindness but also opening our freedom to breathe. One more breath here, and then release the arms, release the legs, come back to neutral, arms overhead, feet are now about hip distance apart, you're lying on your back. And as you exhale, you'll just take the hands down alongside the hips, walk your feet in so that your feet are now hip distance apart. We're setting up for bridge pose. So lying on your back, on your mat, and I'll come down on the mat because I can demonstrate this. We are gonna to wanna to make sure that our feet are hip distance apart, that we've got the, uh, the feet close enough that we get almost vertical with our shins. And then, of course, you have to move your hair for bridge pose. We're gonna do a couple dynamic bridge poses here as well, which will also let some freedom come into the shoulders. So as you take your next inhale, we're just gonna lift the hips, and as we lift the hips, we're gonna let the arms come up overhead letting this become fluid and, and synchronized with your breath. So the exhalation will let it draw down, draw down, draw down, the hands and the hips drop. A little bit of engagement in the core, so you'll see how I kind of draw the navel in before I lift up. As you take your next in-breath, with that engagement, lift the hips, lift the arms, chin drops in toward the chest, the back of the neck becomes long. And as you exhale, you'll let the hips and the hands come down in synchrony. Let's do two more just like that. Inhale, hips up, arms reach up overhead. And we just pause here, feel that engagement of the core. Maybe soften your bum a little bit so that your legs can hold you in this space rather than your tightening glutes. And on your next exhalation, we'll drop it down. And we'll do one more just like that where we inhale to lift. We pause, we just stay here for a breath or two, and then we'll start to descend, letting the hands and the legs, hips come down. Settle in for a moment here. We're gonna take our hands to rest one hand on each knee. With your exhale, draw the knees toward the chest. As you inhale, reach the knees away, just as far as your arms will allow. On your exhalation, draw in. On your inhalation, release out. Let's do three more. Exhale to come in. Inhale to release out. Exhale to come in. 
Inhale to release out. And then last one, we'll exhale to come in. We'll release out. And we'll just take the left leg down and the right leg will come to the sky. Hands can support behind the right thigh and start some ankle rolls. Really make big circles here. Get the ankle to free up and then change directions. Do a little point and flex a few times. And then just another gentle pull in to get a little feeling in the hamstring. And then we'll drop that right ankle onto the left knee. Once you've got that, you're in your reclining pigeon position. You could stay right here with the left foot anchored to the ground, or you can lift the left foot off the ground, reach between the, the right and left leg with the right hand around to the outside. Let that top foot just drop, let the top leg relax, and then draw in to get a little stretch into your right hip and your right hamstring. So the hips, they say in yoga, um, hold our anger. And I feel there might be a fair amount of that circulating in our systems. The hamstrings um, where the fear lives. So little by little through this practice, let's get rid of all that and invite those things like wisdom, right? Equanimity, uh, compassion. Let's cultivate those qualities as we release the things that do not serve us. All right, releasing out the left foot to the earth, the right foot comes down. Switch sides, the left leg will extend and release your hands behind the left thigh. And just draw it back, take a few rotations, make some circles with your ankle so that you can release any tension there. And then switch directions. Paint circles on the ceiling with your toes. Point and flex, point and flex a few times. Get a little draw in, get that hamstring. Remember the fear line is the urinary bladder line in traditional Chinese medicine. So I, I'm not making this stuff up. And as you exhale, bring that foot down, that ankle crosses onto the right knee and the right thigh can either, the right foot can anchor, left hand can just press against the knee or for a little bit more intensity, lift the foot, grab behind the thigh, release, and then just draw in. And this is where I like to just get a couple breaths deep into the belly so that as I breathe deep, the lungs expand and at the base of the lungs lives our psoas muscle, which will connect into that hip and it'll send just a little gentle nudge in to take you a little deeper. Using the breath in our yoga practice to just enhance the poses, to move prana because prana rides on the breath. Prana is our energy, that subtle life force energy coursing through our bodies. Take another one here, and then we'll just release that out. Both feet drop to the mat. Take your feet as wide as your mat. See that little hip lift? Lift and reset the pelvis. Drop your feet, and then you know where we're going. Just windshield wiper those knees side to side a few times. Remember, it's a drizzle, not a rainstorm, so slow it down. And then we'll just pause there. We'll hug those knees to the chest. We'll roll it to our sides to help ourselves up to seat. So this is, um, this is where I'm gonna take you. Uh, now it's just for a couple of uh, cats and cows on our hands and knees. So if you need a blanket under your knees, hopefully you gathered up some stuff beforehand. I meant to tell you, uh, grab a chair. So if you can holler for somebody to grab you a chair um, or like, you know, on the videotaping one, you'll be able to pause and go get a chair. Some of you may not need it, but it's like a handy prop you could be using at home. So we're gonna go right into our tabletop. So hands and knees, you can use a blanket under the knees to make them comfy. And then we're just gonna set it up, right? When we're doing hands and knees, we wanna look at our, look at our form, the elbows, right over the wrists, over the shoulders, over elbows, over wrists. We want our hips over our knees, everything in a perfect box, right? And then I've been having you just start with kitten and cat, right? Can you just pause a little bit here before you go into your max? So just taking little cats and cows and exhaling as we round and inhaling as we lift, just starting to synchronize your breath with this really basic movement of flexion and extension of the spine. This is as we connect our breath with our body, with our awareness, that's the union of yoga. That's that, that's that, that trinity, right? Body, mind, and spirit connection. We connect the breath with the movement and with our intention. 
So now we're gonna just start to take a little side movement as well. So the left shoulder will draw toward the left hip and we'll look back at the left heel. A little side body stretch. Inhale to center, left shoulder, left hip, look at the left heel. And then just go side to side a few times from left to right, keeping a little drawing in through the navel, right? So we don't wanna be in a really, uh, we don't wanna have this dip here. You wanna draw it in slightly, focus on the side body. Feel how it feels when you keep the pelvis stable and you just move through the shoulder girdle. And then next time you come through center, we're gonna to go to puppy pose. Palms walk forward about your arm's length. Your hips will stay over the knees. You'll drop your forehead down. Your heart will melt down on a hatasana, right? If your forehead does not reach the earth, you could bring in a blanket, a bol bolster, a pillow, anything that you might have that could support your head. Just let that heart space sink down towards the earth. Play with the tilt of the pelvis here. You don't have to go into a full anterior tilt, right? You can start to get a little neutralization in the lumbar spine here. One more breath here as you feel the shoulders soften. You might even rock the third eye point on the mat a little bit side to side. And then we'll slide the hands back just part ways, bringing them in maybe just ahead of where they would be. So one hand's distance ahead of tabletop. And we'll start our ascent into our first down dog. So I like to just take this first dog and just move in it and pedal your feet. You want to look at your hands, maybe check that your middle finger is more or less at 12 o'clock. You've got the weight evenly distributed between the palms. And you can just let the head and neck hang heavy, right? Don't try to hold your head up and down dog. Surrender into gravity. Keep the back of the neck long. Take a, take a moment here and just find stillness. If you want to check your down dog alignment, come into a plank, finding shoulders over wrist, drawing the navel to the spine, right? We want to really feel that the whole body weight is distributed. We're not just dumping it into the arms, right? So press firmly through the hands, feel the back of the shoulders separate. Don't let the belly sag, don't let the hips sag, the legs sag. We draw it up into a nice strong line. From that plank pose, you will find your down dog, and then float from plank to dog a few times. Just finding your rhythm here, right? And if this is too much, you could be going from child into table, right? So find what works for you. And the next time you're in your down dog, just holding, feel the head and neck reaching toward the earth, the sit bones lifting toward the sky, a little bit of engagement through the core. And we'll just start to walk our hands and feet to meet. When the hands and feet meet, you're just gonna tangle here, letting the arms hang heavy, the head hang heavy, back of the neck is long. You could even take your hands and just give a gentle pull at the base of the skull, nothing too aggressive. And then I just like to sway. So letting your hands come to travel to the left foot, make a little rainbow around your feet, go to the right foot and maybe back. Finally, pausing there in the center, releasing everything. Feel free to keep the knees bent. And we'll inhale to a halfway lift. So hands to shin. We wanna find a nice square to the side body, right? So that if I look at you from the side, I see a, a 90 degree. We take the rounding out of the low back, shoulders are pulling back, crown is reaching forward. We feel this alignment, right? Hips coming in over ankles, shoulders long. Space between the vertebrae here. This is a traction in pose. Exhale, release it back down. And inhale again, halfway lift, lengthen, set it up. Exhale, fold. On your next inhale, soften through the knees, reach through the arms, inhale and rise. Coming up to Hasta Tadasana, hands overhead, and then we'll just release the hands down to the side. I'm trying to make sure you can see me in both cameras. Okay, so Tadasana, top of the mat. Letting the shoulders soften down. Take your gaze neutral, chin is neutral. Feel the earth beneath you, right? So standing into the feet in itself is grounding, but really bringing your awareness to the feet, to the legs, feeling the connection to the earth, trusting that the earth is supporting you. Shoulders soft, find your center, 
right? Where is that place of equanimity within, right? The equal standing. Nice, open your eyes, let's flow. Inhale, reach your arms up. Maybe even a little gaze up, doesn't have to be drastic. As you exhale, hinge at the hips. The hips will go behind and you'll fall into that forward fold. As you inhale, come up halfway. As you exhale, fold. As you inhale, rise to stand. Arms reach so we start to move lymphatic fluid here. Exhale, we'll fall right back in. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, arms come up overhead. We're starting to warm up the spine, warm up the body. Keep the breath moving in and out through your nose with the mouth sealed. Here we go, inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway, exhale, fold. Let's step the right foot back. So now we're on railroad tracks. We're in a low crescent lunge. See if you can and, you know, support the, the hands either side of the front foot. If your butt's way up in the air, try to bring it down. And then let's hand, have the hands float. It's a balance challenge, right? Just for a moment. Now we'll inhale and we'll reach our arms up. Just coming into our crescent lunge standing, feeling a little stretch in the right side hip. Shoulders soft, neck is neutral, gaze is out in front of you. As you exhale, hands will come down. We'll step the front foot back to down dog. Shoulders soft, release your, your weight of your head. Don't try to hold it up, heels are dropping. Looking forward, we'll take the right foot. Maybe you like to lift the leg to step or maybe you just step right foot forward. Float the right, float the fingertips coming into our crescent here. Just pause for a moment. Taking the weight from that, that front foot, you're gonna hop the back foot forward, coming into your forward fold. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to heart. And moving on, other side. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hinge and fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. The left foot steps back. Float the fingertips just for a moment. We'll rise up into our crescent lunge. As you exhale, the hands come down, the foot steps back, right into our down dog position. From here, left leg will reach up or just step forward, coming into the floating fingertips. We're not even gonna lift up, step the back foot forward, forward fold. As you inhale, reach the arms up overhead. Exhale, hands to heart. Moving on, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Step your right foot back, this time dropping the right heel as an anchor and lift up into warrior one position. Right heel is right of center, left heel left of center. Shoulders are soft and down. We wanna feel that there's some stretch in that right hip flexors. Squaring hips and shoulders toward the top of your mat. Take an inhale here as you exhale. We're just gonna lean forward, arms reach back. Inhale, sweep the arms back up overhead. Exhale, lean it up. Inhale, reach it up. As you exhale, this time hold, interlace your hands. Pull the hands away from the sacrum, reach the heart forward, chin slightly in. Keep that Jamandara Bandha where we keep chin, that chin lock or throat lock. Back of the neck is long. Pause here. If you want a little more, you could dip it. Left shoulder to maybe above the left knee. Maybe you go in a little bit further. You decide. And then we'll start to rise up. Fingertips come up to the sky. From here, starting our, our transition into a warrior three. So the step in from the back leg. This is where the chair could be really handy if you had the time or you've had somebody grab you a chair. For warrior three, we're starting to lift the back leg. Lift the back leg, lift the back leg. Go to the place where you can still maintain hip, heel, and shoulder in line. In other words, you're not gonna let everything cave. You're gonna keep lifted through the chest, lifted through the glute, and then you settle in. The chair could come in handy, right? Where you could place your hands on a chair to help you in a supported warrior three, squaring the shoulders and hips. And we'll just start to let it release out, whether your hands are on a chair, or wherever you are, that right foot is gonna land. We're gonna land back standing, 
toes turning out, heels turning in, malasana squat pose. Just take a moment here in your squat pose. It's a moment to just recollect yourself. If the squat is not comfortable, you can be in a chair pose. The hands will come back down to the earth. The feet will spin in so they're parallel, hip distance. Inhale, halfway. Exhale to fold. Inhale to rise. Exhale to fold. Step your left foot back, right foot back, coming into our down dog position. And just breathe. We're going to step the left foot to the left fingertips, right heel drops down, and we'll rise up into our warrior one on the other side. Bringing hands to prayer at heart, and then releasing them down to the side. As you inhale, we'll reach up, and as you exhale, we'll lean out. Inhale to reach, exhale to lean. Inhale to reach and exhale to lean. Interlace the hands, draw them back. Take an inner lift here. And as you exhale, we'll drop it in. Letting the shoulder hover over the knee. The head reaches down, the neck is long. On your next inhale, reach the fingertips to the sky. And as you exhale, we'll send it into our warrior three. Letting that left foot be the standing leg. Release that right foot down, turn the toes out, the heels in, we'll sink in. So I think I may have just done the same side, so we're going to go ahead and step in and do the right leg next. Hands down, fold in, step your left foot back, inhale, warrior one. As you exhale, lean it out. As you inhale, reach up. Exhale, lean. Interlace the hands, knuckles away from the best sacrum. Take a little inhale to lift. As you exhale, right shoulder, right knee. Maybe you stay high. You don't have to go that low. We'll inhale to come back up. Hands to prayer at the heart. Shifting the weight. Stepping into our right foot, finding our warrior three position. It can be really teeny tiny. I'm more concerned with strength, right? And keeping integrity in, this, in the shape. Maybe your hands come to a chair. Square the hips, square the shoulders. And then we'll bring that left foot in to meet the right. And again, that squat pose. So we got a bonus round there. You know, can't have perfection. Well, we could, but not on this round. Take a few breaths. I know you're laughing at me right now, and that's okay. You're laughing with me. All right, hands down, hips up, forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift, exhale fold. Root to rise, fingertips to the sky. And as we exhale, hands will come to prayer at the heart. We're gonna take it to a wide leg. So from the top of your mat, I'm gonna to step to face you. We're gonna go wide legs. Get the feet so they're parallel, hip distance apart. And from here, let's take the right toes, turn them out 90 degrees. You'll bend in and out of that right knee a couple times. We've got the back foot either parallel or slightly turned in. Bend in, bend out. Just take a few moments here to kind of find your warrior two where we have heel to heel and open hips. The front knee tracks over the middle of the foot. The arms go out, shoulders are soft. Check for this, right? Relax the shoulders, relax your gaze, level the hands. You know, are you out in the future? Are you trying to drop something in your past? Just check where your hands are, where your torso is, right? And then we're gonna fly. So as you inhale, reach up. And as you exhale, sink in. Our flying warrior, inhale, reach up. This is a Kenny Frisbee move. I just adored him being here and learned so much. So parts of him live on in my practice and in my teaching. As we inhale, reach. And as you exhale, now hold into your warrior too. Hey, Kenny, if you're watching. Peaceful, back hand down, front hand up and over. Just letting the front body get a nice release. Front knee is tracking over the ankle. Neutral gaze. From peaceful warrior, we'll go straight into reverse triangle, front leg straightens. Bend into that knee, shift forward, right elbow, right knee, left arm overhead and we come into a supported side angle, your elbow resting on the knee. You can see this upper arm bone lines up with the shin bone. We stack the bones. We use the skeleton to support it. 
Now start swimming your top arm, really reaching. I wanna feel the stretch from here to here, right? So I'm reaching beyond. And then we'll take one more rotation this way and we'll change it to a backstroke. A few backstrokes. And then the bind, the top hand reaches behind. We let that hand, maybe the left hand is in the right kidney, but maybe it's also wrapping all the way around to the leg. You find your range. Either way, the goal is open up this shoulder, release the pec, release the front delt. Take some of the rounding out of the upper back. I bet your front leg is ready to come out, come into a reverse triangle. Just pause, front leg is straight, getting a break here. The right arm is gonna reach out, we're gonna wiggle the hips, right? Shimmy, shimmy your hips. The left hip goes back, we set the pelvis, softness in the front knee. Top arm helps us to roll open by being bound and then draw the navel in. Right hand down, left hand releases. Check for this, are you really long here and compressed here? See if you can draw the left rib and hip together, which ultimately lets me lengthen the bottom. So we equalize the two sides, right? Find all the triangles in my body, right? Your front big toe is grounded. Your gaze could be up, it could be down, it could be straight ahead, but don't let your head just be flopping. Keep some power in the neck muscles. We're gonna bend into that knee and come right back to a warrior two. Flying high, arms come up, the front toes pivot. We parallel the feet. To neutralize between sides, we're gonna to go to a forward fold. So as you exhale, your hands will come to your hips. You'll come only halfway. Draw the thigh bones back in space. Pull the shoulders back. Reach your crown forward. All right, get that pause. And now let's twist it. Right hand down, left hand reaches up. So from the side, it would be, I'm gonna shift just so you can see how long the spine is, right? And we're rotating not from the pelvis, but from the thoracic region. As you exhale, left hand down. As you inhale, right arm comes up. Find that length in the spine, right? Crown reaching, tail reaching. What's between them? Your spine. And all of those vertebrae right now getting some space. Watch for the tendency to have too much, too much of a, a lordosis in the low back. Little tuck of the pelvis, keep it long. Now we'll release it down. I'm gonna reshift myself to face the way I was. On your next inhale, rise all the way up. Turning the left toes out, you're in heel to heel alignment. Right toes might turn in, warrior two, they might be parallel to the back of the mat. From here, just pause, right? Well, actually, just give me a second to catch my breath. All right, here we go. Fly it up, inhale, reach, exhale, sink. Inhale to reach, exhale to sink. Let's do two more just like that. Inhale and exhale. And finally, last one. Inhale and exhale. Take it to a peaceful, reaching through the top fingertips, the front knee. Keep it honest. Sometimes I see this. You know, we come out of the front knee. Keep the front knee pressing, lifting up and out of the, the left hip. Several breaths here. And then I'm going to shift you right into a side angle. Left elbow, left knee, right arm overhead, and then you can start this nice reach and rotate. Opening up the shoulder, freeing the fascia on the side body. Let's get several more rotations, and then we'll change it. A few back strokes, and the bind, taking that right hand behind. Take a moment here. I'm ready to come out, let's shift through reverse triangle. For me, a little shift of the back foot to close the gap between the two feet really helps to shorten a little bit from warrior two to triangle. Several breaths. Setting up for triangle, trikonasana. The pelvis can be a lot of places here. We wanna shift the pelvis to the right, to the back of the mat, reaching the fingertips long, soften the knee, drop. Find that top shoulder again, bring your awareness there, draw it back, because it probably dipped. The right shoulder and right hip drawing back, the right arm now reaches up. And we try to equalize the lower and upper ribs. Several breaths here, as you just settle in and be in the pose. I hope you're enjoying our Soulful Sunday.
It would be much better if y'all were just sitting here filling this room up with your laughter and your love. All right, we're going to bend into the knee, come back to our warrior two, and we'll fly it up again. Palms touch, feet are now parallel. Take an inhale, maybe a little lift, and as you exhale this time, we're going to bind the arms, interlace, draw knuckles down, lift the heart up, and then send the hips back, soften the knees, drop in. Arms go up overhead, head is down. We're going to let this be a, an opportunity to see. We don't want to swallow up the neck. Pull the shoulders up out of the ears, lengthen the neck. Let the arms reach up. The more you clasp the hands together, the more intense it is on the shoulders. And we're going to just release it now. So hands drop down. Come up just enough to turn your toes out and your heels in. And let's crawl up our legs and come into our goddess position. Coming into our goddess, we'll just take a little inhale, press through, exhale, sink it down. Inhale, reach and press. Exhale, sink it down. Let's do two more. Inhale up. Exhale down. And last one, we'll inhale up. And we'll exhale this one. We're holding, holding. We're still holding. But we're smiling. Drop your right forearm onto your right thigh. Reach your left arm up and over. Try to track the knees out over the toes. Without coming out, hands to prayer. Shift. Left forearm lift. And come up and over. Are you ready to come out? Not yet. Hang in there. Smile. Inhale. Let's rise up. Exhale. Hands are going to come onto the hips. We're going to heel toe the feet together. Step it into Tadasana, center of your mat. Just release for a moment. Close your eyes. Feel, just feel the energy in your body, how it's shifted. I can feel a palpable shift from the tips of my toes to the crown of my head, just from this little bit of practice. I so appreciate being able to be here. All right, so let's take a balance pose here. Okay, so balance, oh my gosh, just finding our foot, right? Finding our feet, finding our ability to, to recover balance in the middle of, you know, turbulent times. So let's, let's take our left foot as our standing foot. Once you've shifted the weight into the left foot, your hands might want to just come onto the hips for stability. Watch for the standing leg hip to start to push out. Keep it nice and solid. And then we're going to just take that right foot into tree pose, toes to the floor. Your, heat, your arch could come into the calf, right? You might bring that foot up into the thigh. You can decide. You don't want to be in the knee, above or below the knee. And then maybe, maybe your hands can come to prayer at the heart. Maybe you grow some branches. We take our thumb and index finger as a symbol, it's a mudra of energy, uniting our individual with universal consciousness. And if nothing else, this whole epidemic has created a universal consciousness. We're all in a same space together with this, right? And so it's kind of, uh, in a crazy way, connecting our humanity. Let's bring our hands to prayer, bring them back to the heart and then release it out. Shake it up. Right leg becomes the standing leg, left toes to the floor. Just make sure you switch, because you did the opposite, or I called the opposite. Pick where your foot's gonna go. Check for your standing leg hip to be strong and solid. This balance poses create stability in our hips, right? They create this sense of stability. So yoga's not just about mobility. It's about creating a perfect balance between stability and mobility between effort and ease, right? Between work and play, between holding on and letting go. Let's reach our arms up, fingers touch, then we release out into the universe, our loving awareness, our gratitude, our peaceful presence. We bring our hands back to the heart, we bring them back down, and release everything out. Shake it up, shake it up. All right, we're going to just take uh, take it down to the mat now because it's coming into uh, 15 minutes left to this class. So standing center of your mat, let's just inhale, reach our arms up. And as we exhale, we'll forward fold, soften the knee. Inhale halfway, exhale to fold. Step your hands forward, walk your feet back, and just come into a down dog here. 
And if you would like a vinyasa, this is your opportunity. You can come into plank, drop the knees, chin and chest, or do a full chaturanga. That was not very good. I didn't want to smack my head. Take a cobra, and then exhale back into your down bow. You choose how you're going to move into this next shape. Take several breaths. And we're going to just let the knees melt down, draw them out to the edges of the mat, bring your toes to touch. Sit it back into a child's pose just for a, a breath or two. Bringing the forehead down. Again, let the forehead roll side to side a few times here. If your knees are uncomfortable, letting the hips drop all the way back, by all means, hips can stay a little higher. And we'll start our transition just coming up into tabletop. We're going to take that right foot, bring it back, take a reach, and then draw the right foot to the outside of the right fingertips. Slide the left knee back. This is a place where padding for the knee could be really helpful. Coming into our lizard pose and just wanting to stretch out here through the hip, right? So there's some dynamics I'm looking for. The right knee over the ankle, the left leg back in a place where you feel the stretch. This is a place where if you had a chair, you could use the chair as a prop. If you have blocks, some of you don't need this. You can just be down low on the ground, right? I'm pretty sure um, Nikki somewhere like here or here, right? But where are we? It doesn't matter, right? Be where you are. If you want to get low and really sink in, that's all good. Or you could be up here with this old chick. And I'm a happy old chick, so here you go. Take a few more breaths here. Lazy lizard. Being a lazy lizard. So allowing for a little shift now, walking the hands either side of the heel, we're going to shift it out into a half split pose. The right foot will go long, right leg is long. You might want to have, again, the chair is a great option for a prop that everybody's got a chair in their house, right? So you can grab a chair if you don't have blocks. This is nice for me uh, to just come into a half split without a lot of effort. And then from our half split, we're just going to turn and we're going to rise up. The right foot now just dropped into the earth, right? The right edge of the foot is, is parallel to the edge. The knee is stacking. We'll inhale, reach up. And as you exhale, slide, it, slide in, gate pose. On your next inhale, fingertips to the sky. Exhale, left palm down in line with the knee. You could use a block here. You could be on your fingertips. The right foot can stay anchored or the right foot can float for a side plank variation. And then we'll drop that down, we'll rise back up. We're gonna sit down into a seated position. Watch the transition. My left foot spins in and my right leg is out. However you get there is good. It's a hair correction moment. All right, so from here, we've got Half butterfly, essentially. The left knee bent, right leg long. On your next inhale, reach arms up. And as you exhale, right hand will come down. Left arm comes over. We come into a half butterfly, side bend. Stack the shoulders. Feel the stretch. Again, opening up the space in the side body. Take your gaze down. Take your gaze up. Good. We'll come up. And we'll turn, rotate toward the right leg. Make sure the torso aligns with the leg. Walk the hands forward. Maybe coming in here to a little half butterfly fold over the right leg. Several breaths. Don't force it, right? Surrender into gravity. Now as you come up, your arms are going to reach up. Your left hand will plant behind the left hip at a little diagonal, rolling up on the right shin. Stargazer, right? We want to come up onto the shin, the left arm supporting, right arm reaching back. Now this nice, uh, graceful descent. The arm drops, the hips drop, and we rise up. We'll do that whole sequence again. Right hand down, left arm over, side bend, shoulders stacking. Inhale, reach your arms up. Rotate toward the extended leg, half butterfly fold. 
Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, left palm down. Inhale, stargazer. And then graceful descent. I learned that from Anna. And we release it out. So now the, the tricky part is getting back, right? So coming back, how did we go in? We come into the, this, this position, the gate, walk it around. You're back at your lizard with the right foot forward. We need to switch sides. So just shift it back, take a tabletop. Either from tabletop or if you feel like you wanna fold vinyasa, I'll give you time. You go to dog, exhale to lower again, I'm avoiding the chair. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, back down dog. And then we'll bring it into the knees or not, the left foot comes forward. We come into that lizard position, right? First, use your chair, right? Drop in wherever is good for you. You can sink low or you can stay high. And just rest in. Take a moment here. If you don't have any props, you know, being on the fingertips, the key points here, the knee is over the ankle, right? Right hip is getting some stretch. Just taking a moment or two here to be in it, breathe, marinate, release a little bit more of the anger from your hips. And then the shift, right? Just shifting back to your half split. This is where I'll pull the chair in, but if you don't have a prop, no worries. Just leaning in, right? Our heel is in line with our hip. It's, it's, it's out to, the, to a line, and then the chest reaches forward. If I'm using a chair, which is really nice, I just lean my whole forearms here onto the chair, getting the left heel to drag back as my heart reaches forward. So try not to round here, but reach through the heart, level through the low back. Really big difference between those two positions of the shoulder and pelvic girdle. So in order to not be backwards to you, you're gonna just pivot, right? You're gonna pivot so that now you're in gate pose with the left leg extended. I'm just gonna, there's my fancy pivot. Inhale, reach up. As you exhale, left hand down, left shin, right arm up and over. Inhale to come up. As you exhale, right palm down. You can float the left leg or you can keep the left leg down. Coming into our side plank variation, right? It's a side plank variation. We'll inhale to come up. And as we exhale, we'll let ourselves down into a seat. The right foot will slide in so that we can come in, right leg in, half butterfly, left leg extended. Inhale to reach. And as you exhale, the left palm goes down, the right arm reaches. Shoulders stack, open up through the right ribs, keep a nice long back of the neck, reaching through the fingertips. And several breaths here. We'll inhale to come up and we rotate. Make sure shoulders are aligning towards and then go in slowly. Right? This is a tricky pose, especially if you have sacroiliac dysfunction where the sacrum and ilium shift easily. You wanna go very carefully into asymmetric forward fold pose as such. With our next inhale, we'll come up and we'll do that again. We'll side bend. We'll come up and we'll lean forward. And we'll rise up and we'll stargaze. Right hand to the diagonal of the right hip. Roll onto the right shin, lift the left hip. Left arm reaches. And then cycle it back through. Inhale. As you exhale, we'll side bend. As you inhale, we'll reach up. As you exhale, forward fold. As you inhale, reach up. As you exhale, right hand down. Reach it up, stargaze. And then pivot it down. We're gonna bring it right back around into our tabletop. Taking it into a cat and cow a few times. Cats and cows, just to come back to where we started. A little side to side sway. And then we'll take it right onto our bellies for a moment. We're gonna come into a sphinx pose here. So resting onto your forearms, your legs out behind you. Your, your arms should be at a 90 degree angle here. And we're going to take this active. So 
Press the earth away. Feel the space grow between your shoulder points and your ears. Lift up through the core. Draw the, the navel in slightly. Engage the glutes lightly. Navel in slightly, glutes in lightly. I just made, I made a rhyme. Drag back on the forearm. Feel the pubic bone engage to the earth and then take several deep breaths. Now we're gonna do an optional movement here, which the left hand will come sideways in front of your chest and the right knee will bend. Reach around, maybe you will not reach for the foot, but if you can, you're gonna clasp the foot with the right hand and just keep pressing into the mat with the left. And if you can't reach it, just pulling in will give you a stretch. And then releasing that side switch, right hand down, left hand reaches back, we press in with the left for right forearm, Pull with the left hand. Releasing that up, palms down, shift it back. Child's pose, walk the knees in. Let's sink the hips back slowly. Drop it down and rest into your fold, seated here into the hips, onto the heels. Just two breaths here. And then we're going to walk it back to come up to a seat. So from a seated position, let's just make sure that you've got room before we get down on our backs to lie down. Walk it in. Let's just get the hips right in over so they're center mat and the feet are about hip distance apart. From here, we'll start to roll it down onto the back, bringing the knees into the chest as we go. Once we're down, we're gonna just let those feet drop onto the earth and kind of revisit where we were at the beginning of class. We'll just take those, those feet and have them planted hip distance with the shins as close to parallel, I mean, perpendicular as you can get them. And this time we're gonna take a bridge and hold it. So let's draw the navel in. You'll feel the pelvis tilt a little bit as we draw the navel in and the hips and, and ribs come closer. From there, press in, feet are parallel, we're gonna just lift up, folding into the bridge pose here for five breaths. All four corners of the feet planted. Bridge pose, we want to get the back of the neck long. So if your chin is above your forehead, try to draw the chin down so that the forehead and the chin are either in line or the chin is slightly lower. The idea of a bridge is to open up through the shoulders, through the chest, the back of the neck. And then slowly one vertebrae at a time, we'll let the hips Settle, we'll drop it in and just let the weight of the pelvis drop down. Taking the knees in toward the chest and then bringing the feet up towards the sky, coming into a legs up the wall position, letting the feet just kind of float there above the hips. And we'll let those feet return to the earth. We'll take it into a reclining cow face. So right ankle over, right, right thigh over left thigh and we'll draw the knees toward us, either grabbing onto the outside of the left knee or you can grab onto the two shins, the two feet, drawing everything into center. Just another little moment to get a hip opener here. And then release the feet down, shift the whole shape to the right a little bit and then drop the knees to the left. So the hips shift right, we drop the knees left, we come into a twisted roots, uh, Twist, if that's too much, let the legs come apart so the two knees can stack. And just sit with it for a moment. This is one you just want to let yourself melt into. I love you guys. All right, let's start to unwind ourselves, come on back to center, walk it back, shift the hips back, take a little legs up the wall again, just to let everything come back to neutral. We'll let the feet drop back to the earth, this time left thigh over the left over right, and we'll draw it in, pulling on the, the left shin on both ankles, right, or both feet, drawing everything in. The shape comes into a reclining cow face, Ears, face, in case you were wondering. And we'll release a 
start our way into the twist. Drop the right foot down, use that foot to lift the hips and shift them to the left. And from there, drop the knees down to the right. I feel this real intensely right here into the left rib cage where I'm probably a little tight, holding some tension. Let's release that with our breath. Anywhere you're finding tension, let it go. Starting to release the foot, feet come down. We'll need to shift the hips back to center with a little baby bridge. We'll hug those knees in. Once we have the knees, we'll grab for the feet for a happy baby pose. I like to just shift it a little bit side to side, pulling down, letting the sacrum drop. One last little hip opening sequence here. We'll bring our feet to touch. We'll drop the feet down to the mat and let the knees fall open, reclining butterfly pose. Melt the low back down. I was kind of holding up in the low back, so you can let the low back drop down. Starting to bring the knees together. One last little knee to chest. And then I'm gonna welcome you to create as much comfort as you can for a little Shavasana shape here. So letting the feet wide open, letting the shoulders relax down. Create symmetry in your body for your Shavasana. And as you're in your Shavasana, I'm just going to walk you through a nice relaxation for your body. So shimmy shift, support with pillows, blankets, just make your body as symmetrical and supported as you can on your mat. And begin to close the eyes and just connect with your breath. Allow the breath to become um, more and more subtle now. So as your body is now calming down from movement and the heart rate starts to slow down, let the breath slow down with it. So it becomes almost imperceptible. The breath is calm and steady. It's slow, low, and even. Just letting the body now come into a place of surrender. Feeling everything from the tips of the toes to the hips get heavy and drop into the earth. The bones dropping in, the thighs, the calves, all of the muscles around the bones just melting down into the earth from the tips of the toes to the low back. Let the low back, the belly soften. The low back drops in and we start to feel how the back moves with our breath. As we inhale, we're going to feel a little lift of the low back. And as we exhale, we can feel the low back releasing down just a little closer to the earth. Softening any tension there in the muscles that surround and support our lumbar spine. Even sensing that the organs are softening and releasing to the back body. Letting tension go in the tummy, in the ribs, in the whole front body from the hips to the shoulders, the whole back body from the sacrum to the skull, the torso dropping heavy into the earth. Let your awareness move down your arms, the shoulders soften, the palms relax so that there's barely a little move, like the tiniest little curling in of the fingers. No tension in the hands, the arms, the shoulders, the neck. The neck is soft, the jaw is soft, the teeth slightly parted, the tongue resting to the roof of the mouth. Eyes relaxing in the socket, the forehead soft, starting slowly now to just let the thoughts quiet. Let your awareness settle with your breath, the in-breath and the 
the out breath. And just be in the silence of the breath for the next 30 seconds. So bringing yourself back from your Shavasana shape, um, slowly bringing movement into the fingertips and into the toes. Let that ripple up through the arms and the legs. Slowly making your way into a comfortable side position and just resting there on your side for a moment. Use your hands and your breath to bring you up to a comfortable seated position. So thank you for joining me. Um, I'm gonna close with a quote I've read to you many times through the last few years um, because it's truth. In the end, you are your own best guru. Your life is your guru. As you need them, special individuals may appear to help you find the road that leads to the road. But these are not your teachers. Everything that happens to you is your teacher. The secret is to learn to sit at the feet of your life and be taught by it. Polly Behrens, author of Whole Child, Whole Parent, in the book, um, The Zone, by my friend Ruben. So here we are on yet another hero's journey, right? We've been all thrown into this journey of COVID-19 collectively. Um, not all who wander are lost, right? But in the end, um, if the wandering does not transform us, right, then what's the point? So let's all allow this, uh, this journey to transform us, this time in the cocoon of COVID-19 to be a time of deep introspection, um, of, of awareness, of cultivating consciousness of our own evolution. Um, let it be what it is. Bring your hands to your hearts. The lightning sees, honors, and loves the light in each of you. And I look forward deeply, among the things I look forward to, to the day we all are here again on a Sunday celebrating this beautiful practice uh, and this awareness that we all grow together. The light in me sees, honors, 